greetings citizens of the world. It was reported, that moderate Syrian rebels that the United States is planning on arming and training to fight against ISIS, or IS, or ISIL, or whatever, have signed a non-aggression pact with none other than, ISIS, or IS, or ISIL, or whatever. This is not new. The United States has been arming these very same rebels, even when they were openly aligned with ISIS and Al-Qaeda, for over a year. The United States was funding and arming these rebels, through Arab League proxies, while they slaughtered and raised some of the oldest Christian communities in the world. But what are the potential downsides, the consequences of arming uh, some of the moderate rebels in Syria? When we see reports like uh, what happened just last week, uh, that the Free Syrian Army was apparently participating in the abduction of 40-some UN peacekeepers in the Golan Heights, are these the people that we want to start supplying with weapons? Well, uh, two different things, in the Ukraine and in Syria. Uh, Syria, we backed, I believe, in some cases, some of the wrong people, and uh, not in the right part of the Free Syrian Army, and that's a little confusing to people. So uh, I've always maintained, and go back quite some time, that we were backing the wrong types. I think it's going to turn out maybe this weekend in a new special that Brett Baer is going to have Friday that's going to show some of those weapons from Benghazi ended up in the hands of ISIS. So we helped build ISIS. Now there's a danger there, and I'm with you. At that time, the United States turned a blind eye, because the goal was not to defeat ISIS, it was to overthrow Assad, so a few thousand dead Christians were not really a big deal. Then ISIS did the unimaginable, they threatened the United States and other Western oil interests in Erbil, Iraqi Kurdistan's oil hub. Then the bombing began. Yes. They lied to the public on their corrupt corporate paid mainstream media, by saying, they were going to save innocent Yazidis trapped on a mountain, which they curiously called Christians. All the while, the airstrikes were actually targeting militants that were on the verge of taking over Erbil's oil distribution hub. Barack Obama was on corrupt corporate paid TV to announce his plans to arm these rebels, in his renewed war on terror, and lied when he said the United States rescued the Yazidis that were trapped on Mount Sinjar. They did not rescue the Yazidis, the Kurds did. Bombs do not rescue people. But it is nice and convenient to lie and say their bombs are helping people, and not killing them. Not only that, but the Yazidis are far from saved, just ask one of them about their humanitarian efforts, and how well they are working. Oh that's right, they are not working. The plight of the Yazidis, falsely labeled as Christians, was nothing more than a convenient rallying cry for Western war hawks, eager to protect oil interests, and start another perpetual war, over their failing geopolitical chess match with China and Russia. The war propaganda conveniently claims, that the United States will defeat ISIS, or IS, or ISIL, or whatever, by arming the mythical moderate rebels in Syria. There is a few major flaws in this bogus rhetoric. Firstly, there are basically no moderate rebels left fighting in Syria. Even the mainstream Syrian rebels, better known as the Islamic Front, are Salafist militiamen, who would instill hardline Sharia law, if they won the war in Syria. We know this, because they are already doing it in the land that they currently control. The only difference between ISIS and the Islamic Front, is that ISIS is slightly more violent. Secondly, the moderate opposition to ISIS in Syria, just signed a non-aggression pact with them, meaning, that they will now fight alongside each other, to topple Assad. So unless America and their war-hungry allies are planning on completely manufacturing new rebels from Syrian refugee camps in Turkey, they have no friends in the region. The guys they want to back, arm, and train, are fighting side by side with ISIS. This has not slowed down their march towards war, but we can still prevent Congress from funding this atrocity. The goal now is the same as it was last year, regime change in Syria, the toppling of the Assad government, and protecting some oil interests while they're at it. If you truly believe the United States is going to war with Iraq and Syria for humanitarian reasons, ask yourself, why they were funding ISIS only a year ago while they slaughtered Christians. 
Why do they support the repressive Saudi regime? Why did they support dictators that oppress their people? Why did they overthrow peaceful governments in Libya, Guatemala, Chile, Iran, Iraq, and countless other countries? Why do they arm the Israelis who use their weapons to bomb children in Gaza? For humanitarian purposes? Or for money, power, and influence? Assad has made it clear that the United States airstrikes are not permitted in Syria. Keep this in mind, if you have any interest in preventing World War III. Syria has a mutual defense pact with Iran, and Iran is under the protection of Russia and China. We do not think, the world wants to go to war over a manufactured crisis of America's making, but it will, if it is pushed to that point. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. To the corrupt corporate paid United States officials. We see you are walking on very thin ice. Let's see how long will the ice holds out. Until then. Expect us.